Farm Food and Fun with Farmer Larry and Miss Lynn. Oh my gosh, it's getting cold out. And today is a wonderful time to come on in and watch us make some warm, yummy soup, homemade soup and bread. Can't wait to share that with you because we're here at the farm with wonderful food, having and lots having of fun. And having lots of fun. See ya. All right, honey, honey, <laughs> today we're going to make honey, honey butter. Oh my gosh. Ooh, so honey come on butter. over, honey, and let's make some honey butter. Listen, butter is so easy to make. You can make herb flavored butter, all kinds of butter, but we're going to, on this artesian bread that we're making today, this butter is delicious. I love my little mixer, and this is a Christmas present from Larry because it's easy to hold. You don't have to bring out the big one, and it's easy to do things. So today we're going to take a half a stick of butter. It's been softened. Now, how do you soften butter? Mm. One, you either leave it out on the counter for a little while, or you can put it in the microwave for 10 seconds. Softened butter is not like melted butter. No. Totally different. You cannot cook the same way. So we've got softened butter. Do you want to work the you want to work the machine? <laughs> and all we're going to do next is we're going to add a little bit of vanilla, our favorite vanilla we already talked about. We're going to use half a teaspoon. So before, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to whip the butter up. Yep, yeah, we have to whip it up. Yeah, so just put it on down in there. Whip, whip, whip. You turn it up a little higher. You want it to be light and airy. A little higher. A little higher. <laughs> you want it to be light and airy because you're actually whipping air into the butter to make it that way. So we're going to really um, mix that up really good before you add your ingredients. Looking good. Try to keep the mixer in the bowl, otherwise you end up with butter everywhere. Right, babe? That's right. Yes. Honey. And so then we're going to add, so we're going to turn it off for a second. Oh, that's so much better. And then we're going to add a half a teaspoon of vanilla, our favorite vanilla from Haiti, which is we love. Thank you. Thank you so much, Relative, for bringing that to us. So we're going to mix that in. Go ahead and mix that in. And today, I want you to know, we are sharing with you our honey from Italy. This is Italian uh, honey that we're going to share. And we're going to actually share quite a bit. We're going to share a half a cup. So we're going to use our liquid measuring cup, and we're going to put in a half a cup. We're going to pour it right in. Oopsie, there we go, to a half a cup of honey. And then I'm going to show you a little secret. It's always hard to get honey out of a bowl to really get it all out. Otherwise, you're, gonna, you're not going to have enough. So here's the tool that you need. This is a silicone knife tool. It's called a scraper. And you can buy it in lots of different shapes. But when you're using honey, which really likes to stick to things, we're going to just put that in the bowl. And we're going to take it and swirl around just like this. And all that honey comes right out. So this is another tool you really need to have. You can use it for all kinds of things. Every time you use your mixture and you want to poke things down to make sure they're all mixed in really well together, that's an official culinary term, poke it down. Then you just keep stirring. And this is going to make your whipped honey butter. Oh my gosh. So you're going to stir it all in. It looks and absolutely smells delicious. This Italian honey. You can use any kind of honey. You want to try to use local honey. Local honey is really good for you. So we'll turn it up just a little bit. Mmm, tastes good. And we're just going to whip that butter and we're going to put it on some nice warm bread and it's going to be fabulous. So that's all you need to do to make the whipped butter. We're going to put it in a little jar. You can put it in your refrigerator and it'll last for two or three weeks in your refrigerator. And But I promise you it won't last that long if you try it because it's really delicious. You'll eat it. So let's go on down to the bread. You ready to make the bread? Let's make some bread. Let's make some bread. And we're back. And now we want to teach you about the easiest way to make the most wonderful bread in the world. And I'm talking simple. Simple. When I say simple, I mean anybody can do it. We call it artisan bread, and it's really beautiful and fun and easy. So let's get started. There's only a few ingredients. These are all the ingredients that you need to make this fabulous bread. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a little bit of yeast. Now, yeast is the living thing, and we're going to take that out. We need one and a half 
tablespoons of yeast. One and a half tablespoons. And we're gonna put it right in this bowl. Now yeast is a living thing. It's just been dehydrated to uh, slow it down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wake it up. How so much did you say, Miss Lynn? One and a half tablespoons. One and a half tablespoons. Mm -hmm. So the yeast, you can't really see it, but there's little tiny particles in here. As soon as we add the water, we're gonna you're gonna smell the bread starting to, and it's, what it's called is, you bloom the yeast, it's called blooming the yeast. Now the water we're gonna add is three cups of water, but it's not hot water and it's not cold water. That's right. It's lukewarm water because if you use hot water, it will kill the yeast, cold water will not let it bloom. So we're using um, just nice, tepid, warm water so you can feel, we always like to let our, our um, cooking friends fill the water so they know how it's like. And already, already it smells like bread, it smells great. So this is called wafing. And what you do whenever you want to smell something is just take the air and pass it, pass it over to you can, and you can smell wonderful things when you're cooking and that sort of thing. So wafing, it smells like bread. We're going to go ahead and start stirring it up. We like to use wooden spoons to stir. The only other thing that we're going to add is flour and salt. So we're going to add some kosher salt. We talked about kosher salt earlier. And we're only going to add one tablespoon of kosher salt. Now this is going to make a lot of bread. So one tablespoon of salt will not hurt you. It's going to be okay. We think um, bread needs a little bit of salt. If you taste it and you think you like it a little sweeter, then add a little sugar. Sugar can help just make turn bread into wonderful things. Okay, so now we're gonna add the abundance of flour. We're gonna actually add six and a half cups of flour. That's not gonna fit in there. Six and a half cups of flour. And it's all purpose flour. And the reason we're gonna do, now normally when you, the reason you're gonna do that is because we need a lot of flour in this to make a lot of bread. You can half this recipe if you want to, but trust me, you will not want to because you're going to love this bread. So what we're going to do is we just stir it up. This is a no knead bread, kneading mean, meaning mixing with your hands. So we're just going to keep stirring. This is all you do is stir it in, stir it in. That's two, right? So we keep stirring, stirring, stirring. This is a great children's activity. So don't think you can't do it because you can. There's three. Is that three? Mm -hmm. Three. So three. Uh, Got to reach to the bottom four, and now I will tell you when you're making bread, it depends, the amount of flour you use depends on the humidity in the air. If it's very humid in the air, then you're going to need a little extra flour. But we're going to keep going with our flour, <laughs> keep mixing. You see it's getting a little thicker, but not thick enough yet. So this is going to be a little sticky. It's going to be sticky when we finish making it. It's not going to make into a dough that it's really hard. And I'll tell you why we want it to be sticky in just a minute. So what we're going to do, there's six, right? And now we're going to do another half. And you can kind of look, I don't know if you can see, but if you can look at the, the consistency of the dough, all you have to do, whoopsie, you try to keep the dough, try to keep the flour in the bowl. All you have to do is keep mixing it together. I'll let you do that. And then all we're gonna do next is we're gonna cover it with a little saran wrap and we're gonna put it in the refrigerator. No kneading, that's it. Just mix it together. You can see it's still a little sticky to the touch. So I'll show you what we're gonna do to take care of that in just a minute. We're gonna mix it up, cover it with saran wrap, and put it in the refrigerator. Now it needs two hours to rise. So you can either leave it on your countertop if you need it right away, stick it in your refrigerator, and let it stay in your refrigerator up to two weeks just like this just like this, just gooey and sticky, because that's all you need. All right, so we're gonna let this rise for two hours, we're gonna put it in the refrigerator, and we're gonna see what we need to do next. And we will be right back. Okay, we're back. We've let it, our bread refrigerate for up to two hours. You can, oh, it's cold. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on, on the board. We're gonna add a little flour, because like I said, it's gonna be a little sticky. We're gonna pull off, we're just gonna take out, we're gonna pull off a little, about this much, about, about a handful. And this is gonna make a beautiful dough. Um, ball, a ball of bread. What do we call that? A ball of bread. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it and you just treat it like a, um, I don't know, kind of like a mushroom and you just kind of pull it to make it into a round ball, right? See how easy that is? If it's a little sticky, just roll it in some flour, it'd be fine. So we have decided today to go ahead and take all the dough out of the bowl and make it into dough balls because we have company coming tonight and we want to make sure we have enough fresh bread. But typically what you'll do is you just need one or maybe two of these. 
The difficult thing about making fresh bread is usually you make a big loaf of bread and because it doesn't have any preservatives in it, it doesn't last. The, the, the bread you buy in the grocery store has a lot of preservatives in it so it will last for a long time, but you're, in, you're eating those preservatives. We like to eat fresh, so we're going to have company tonight, so we're going to make lots of beautiful um, loaves of bread. So here's what we do and then I'll let Farmer Larry tell you the rest. Okay. Uh, the most important part of cooking this bread is to take a knife and make three small little slits on the top of the bread so that it doesn't explode, so that it can expand without exploding. You don't want it to explode. We're going to let it sit for 30 minutes, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And then what do we do? Then we cook it. I like to cook my bread in a cast iron skillet. Uh, this is a well-seasoned cast iron skillet. Most important part is to add a little bit of corn start, corn meal or flour to the bottom of your pan so that the bread doesn't stick on it. Uh, you need to cook your bread uh, 450 degrees for 30 minutes. And again, another very important point is to put a jelly roll pan or a bread pan in your oven as you're preheating your oven so that the oven is full of moisture when you're cooking the bread. It helps the bread rise and look absolutely gorgeous. So you put water in the bread pan and what does the water do? Does it create steam in the oven? And that's what? That's right. It creates moisture in the oven so that the bread rises as it cooks. So super easy. See how easy that is? We're going to see what the final results are in just a second. So, say voila! This is our final bread. This is the artesian roll. It's beautiful. We've cut some pieces. We've got our, our fabulous uh, honey butter out. Mm. We're going to warm it up and we're going to try it. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you. This bread is so fabulous. You want to try a piece? No, no go, go ahead, ahead Miss Okay. Lynn. Mm, mm, mm. Yummy! Homemade bread with Miss Lynn and Farmer Larry. Okay, I'm so excited because this is the most popular soup that we've been requesting. We make lots of soup from scratch. And listen, soup from scratch is delicious. Not only is it delicious, but you can make a big pot of it and freeze, freeze, it? freeze a lot of it. This is a butternut, butternut squash. squash. Now, I know, we just heard from someone, they said it looks a little intimidating. How do, what do you do with this thing? Bam, no. What you do, Farmer Larry is going to show you exactly what we need to do with this. Okay, so it's, it weighs about two and a half pounds. I always weigh mine at the grocery store so I know what I'm, so know what I'm getting. But this soup, you're going to need one about this size, two and a half pounds. And we're going to, this soup is so easy. All you do is throw everything in there, cook it down, immersion blender it. We'll show you how to do that. And then eat it. It's delicious. Okay, so this is butternut squash. So you want to tell them how to cut this up? Cutting the butternut squash is really pretty easy. Most important thing you need is a sharp knife. And we, we all know that sharp knives are safer than dull knives. So keep your knives very, very sharp. When you hold a knife, you hold it with your pointy finger and thumb on the blade so that you have max control of the knife with your palm wrapped around the handle. A full tang knife, thumb and finger. With a round uh, butternut squash like this, it's important to have a flat surface so that it doesn't roll around and you accidentally cut your finger. What I like to do is cut the top off, cut the bottom off, and then cut it in half. Because you know there are no seeds in the top part. All the seeds are in the bell in this bottom part. Once you get it like this, you can take a peeler carrot peeler and peel all the skin off and then you can cu cut it up and cube it up and put it right in your pot. And we're going to show you how easy that is. While he's doing that, I'm going to tell you what else you put into the soup. The first thing you do is you're going to put a red pepper in. Now if you don't have red peppers, don't worry. All peppers start out green. I don't know if you know that, but a red pepper and a yellow pepper, or orange pepper, all start out green. The reason the red pepper is more expensive is it takes more time to grow a red pepper for a farmer that does a green. Mm. So they all start out green, and then over time it will turn red. So that makes 
more time a, far, a farmer has to spend watching that plant get ready and not replant something else. So it's a little more expensive, but I'm going to show you how we cut that up too. So we're going to take one red bell pepper, we're going to take one onion, we're going to take some garlic, which we have already, already um, separated into cloves, okay, and then we're going to have a little bit of sugar and a little bit of salt, and that's really all you need for this fabulous recipe. because. The real star of the show is the butternut squash. So this time of year is when butternut squash is really plentiful. So the one thing that you want to remember when you're cooking soup is, what's the freshest ingredient I can get? And the, usually the freshest ingredient you can get is right there in the very front of the grocery store on sale. Because when it's on sale, that usually means, if it's local, that it's in a big supply. And so you want to take advantage of that. And what we do is we make a lot of soup we will double or triple this recipe so we have a lot of soup that we make at one time and then we store it in the freezer and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So he's, ta he's already taken the peeler and peeled it and what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on its flat side. Let's see if we can make it help you see a little more because we don't want it to roll. Anything that's round has a tendency to roll and that means that you have a tendency to lose control of your knife. Put our thumb and forefinger on the knife and hold it. A lot of times we'll hold the knife like this, like we're going to like, I don't know, poke somebody or something. But really to control the knife, you have to hold it just like this. So we're going to take it, we're going to cut it right down the center. It's not hard to cut. And as you can see, this has no seeds in it. And we're going to cube it into about one inch pieces. The only reason we do that is so it'll cook a little faster. You could put the whole thing in if you want to, but it would take a little while for it to cook. And we want to make it the most efficient way we can. So we're just going to cube this um, little beautiful butternut squash. We're going to just drop that in the pan, drop that in the pan right there. Now you're going to see when he cuts through the bell of the, um, of the squash, there's a little bit of seeds. All you do is take a spoon, any kind of spoon, yep, and we're just going to scrape those out. So take a spoon, swirl around, those seeds come right out. You want to cut right down to get all that soft pulp out. We're just going to put them right here. Oh my gosh, does that smell good? Oh my mm. gosh, that smells good. So fresh and so good for you. You know, squash, there's lots of different types of squash, but fall squash or winter squash as it's called, um, acorn squash, spaghetti squash, oh, I think something's done over there, um, are all squashes that start to grow actually in the summertime, but finish growing about now. So we're just gonna scrape those seeds right out and then we're gonna take it and continue to cube it. So while he's cubing that, we're gonna just throw that in here. We're gonna add, Add to our butternut squash, we're going to add one full bell pepper and we're going to show you how to cut that up in the most efficient way. Then we're going to add an onion, onion, yeah, and this is just a regular yellow onion. You can just use a sweet onion if you want to, if you like things a little sweeter. Don't get too confused with onions, there's all different types of onions or alliums, they're in the allium family. You can get tiny um, shallots, which have a softer, milder taste, or a yellow onion, which is the strongest of them all, or a sweet onion. So either one is fine, whatever is your personal taste. We're going to put in three cloves of garlic. Now, we're going to mince this garlic up. The way we love to mince garlic up is so easy. We usually buy a big bag of already prepared garlic like this, and we're going to put it in our food processor and we're going to go like this bzzz, and in three seconds this is going to be beautiful minced garlic. We take it out of the food processor, put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it. We like to freeze it. Garlic is one of the best things you can eat. It's the best thing for you. And when you have garlic, you'll use garlic. If you don't have it, if you have to separate it out every single day, you won't use it as much. So always have garlic in your freezer ready to go. And what's the most important part of the Ziploc bag? Oh. Yes, you need to label it and put a date on it. Because I will tell you, lemon zest looks a lot like garlic, but tastes a lot different. Yes, we know. So we're going to mince up. If you want to mince it up individually, you can. It takes a lot longer to do this, so why not do it the easy way? Then we're going to add a little bit of salt. We're going to add seven cups of water, seven cups of water. Two, a tablespoon of salt and two tablespoons of sugar, and that's all it is. You put it all together with the water. You can see Farmer Larry cutting up that bell pepper. Remember, you don't have to cut it into small pieces. It doesn't matter what size it is, because after this, we're going to use an immersion blender to really blend it all up. So all he's doing is pulling the seeds off, getting that bell pepper in. We're going to throw that onion in and, and, 
and we're going to cut it up and throw it in. We're going to put our cloves of garlic in, water in, and put it on the stove. And that's all there is to it. So very simple. And wait till you taste it. It's super delicious. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. So we're back. We're back. And I can't wait because I want to introduce you to my favorite, favorite kitchen tool. This is called an immersion blender. Now it looks a little strange. It looks like a wand. It actually has a um, part of the top, and I don't know if you can see, but it has a little blade in the top. And this is the mixer part. The blade is quite sharp. And all you do is pop this on, the, the motor part, plug it in, and then insert it into any kind of liquid and it will grind it up. So we love it for soups. You can mix, you can uh, scramble eggs with it. You can mix a pancake mix with it. You can do about anything with you it. You can make lumpy gravy smooth with it. Yes, you can. Anything that you want to actually mix. I'm going to show you how it works. This particular, in fact, we use this so much. So this is our fourth one of these. We we love it. And um, this is one that my son gave me for Christmas. So we're going to go ahead and we push the button. This is what it sounds like. All it does. So this is a fabulous butternut squash soup. It's so easy. It's a little thick. And what we're going to do, the last thing we do is we add a little whipped cream. Now, if for some reason you think that's too many calories for you, then try it first. You don't have to add whipped cream. You can also add half and half or just plain milk. But we're going to pour that in. And it is absolutely delicious. Can't wait for you to taste it and watch for the recipe because you will love this. So go out, be brave, make some homemade soup, and enjoy it. Enjoy. And we're sitting on the couch, ready to talk about questions from our friends, cooking questions from our friends, and we hope we can answer them for you. So what's our first question? The first question is, is, why should I make homemade soup instead of buying it? Well, I'm going to tell you quite honestly, I never started cooking until I was 50 years old, which is a little while ago, because I had this fabulous man that could cook and make wonderful things. But when I learned how to make homemade things from fresh things grow in the garden, I was excited. Homemade soup doesn't have the chemicals, the preservatives in it. It's better for you. It tastes better. It's, there's everything that's better about it. And if you can do it quickly and easily and multiply it and, and not, you know, put some in the freezer, the freezer. then it just is just as easy as open a can. That's it really right. truly is. So give it a try. You'll really love it. Next question is, is my homemade bread goes bad quickly. What can I do to keep that from happening? Well, usually when you make homemade bread, you're making a big loaf of bread. And remember, when you make homemade bread, it doesn't have the preservatives in it, so it will only last a couple of days. So what I'm suggesting is make half a loaf or freeze it. You can cut it and freeze it. We have a friend who gives us sourdough bread, which is fabulous, and we always put three or four loaves in the freezer, pull it out and thaw it out, and it's just as good. So make smaller loaves or freeze it. And finally, where can I get an immersion blender? And what's the best type to buy? I love my immersion blender. I love it. It's wonderful. You know what I would say to you is just like tools that you work with in your tool in your workshop, I like to buy, um, start out with the best I can afford. I first bl immersion blender I think was only, not was very inexpensive, very inexpensive, but we used it so much that we went through one, two, three. So we finally did get one that was a commercial um, brand because we do a lot of cooking. But whatever's best for you, if you're just gonna start out, just have an immersion blender is the most important thing. That's so right. get one, go out there, they're very inexpensive and you will use it a lot, right. I promise. And when you burn it out, you can get another one. That's right. So those are all our questions for today. That's what we have. Well, I hope you enjoy joining us here at Farm Food, Food and, and Fun with Farmer Larry and Miss Lynn. We loved having you and we'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.